and you could change that keyboard sound to be a piano or strings or trombones or horns, and it's still a keyboard, but it's, it's electronic. That's how I treat DJing. Vinyl, you know, vinyl records, you know, the recording of the music is on the vinyl back in the day, right? But now they have it so that time code, which is just, a, it sounds like is on the vinyl and it allows you to manipulate the MP3s on your computer. Right. So I still use vinyl, but you it's do? a time coded vinyl. Okay, okay. Because I still like the feel of the record. Okay. But I'm not actually spinning what's on the record anymore. Now I'm just choosing different MP3s using the same time coded vinyl. So to me, it's a way of using old school technology. I mean, old school techniques with new school technology. If you get on a grand piano, you have to know how to play. If you get on a keyboard, you can either, you gotta know how to play or you can press play and let it do it for you. <laughs> then you're faking it. Right. It's the same thing with DJing too. Do you think if we made it a little bit easier for up-and-coming DJs? Is it easier well, I think it's to easier to get started because you don't have to buy records. You don't have to house records, like collect them, put them in crates, keep them up, make sure they don't get warped. With, right. this, with the heat, you know what I'm saying? All those right. sort of things. Now you can literally get a copy of my hard drive, which I never give anybody. But if you got a copy of my hard drive, you would have my whole library in five minutes. Right. You know what I mean? So it's easier in that way. But you still have to know how to read a crowd. You still, it's still in your best interest to learn the art so that you can have a career in it. Because if you if you're not really that good, you won't last that long. It's gonna, somebody's gonna peep you out, right? Somebody's gonna, yeah, somebody's gonna peep game. And you know, you just, you'll be okay. You, you won't be able to command real dollars, okay. I think. And and that's ultimately what you want to be able to do so that you can really make a living at it and not have to work an hour and five necessarily. So with this art of DJing and pretty much with the lifestyle of a DJ, is that pretty much what you go over through with your documentary? Yeah, what I found with my documentary um, is that, uh, Every experience that I was having coming up was pretty special. You know, I moved to Atlanta and I was doing my first party at the Morris Brown and someone was recording. I'd be like, let me get a tape of that. And then, you know, of course when I started DJing with Chris Cross, not only do I have the, you know, the music videos, we did Arsenio, we did Jay Leno, we did the Michael Jackson tour, you know, I kept all those things. And then I was at the Criss Cross and I didn't have any more work. Well, I was in the house. And we cut the camera on too, and I'm trying to find work. Then I got a job at the radio station. And we just kept, and I say we, as in me, my friends, we just kept recording and filming. And now we have 20 years of a story of the DJ. Me, I'm the centerpiece because it's my story, but it's very similar to, I think, other people's struggles, and I want to kind of share that. Say, hey, this is my story. I know you've gone through it too. And if you haven't gone through it, and you do go through it, maybe you can learn from my story. Right, so it is American DJ story, so a lot of DJs will be able to relate to it. Now, has that already came out? It's about to come out? What, what's the release? We, um, we, the goal is, is HBO. That's, okay. that's what our, that's my hope that it, that it reaches HBO. Um, in the process of chasing HBO and trying to learn and understand how you get a documentary on HBO, it's been three years now. And we've been told that, um, we've kind of been led to believe that the film festival route is the route we have to go. So, um, Sundance Film Festival's deadline is in a week or so, so we're, we're rushing to complete our submission for that. And hopefully we'll be in Sundance Film Festival in January of 2012. That's what, that's what we're hoping for. Well, we're definitely hoping for that, because I was doing some research on it, and I was looking at a couple of little clips. I think I saw you like in Paris on one of them, talking to some people who knew about you. So it's like you're reaching everybody. So for them to be able to see you in you know, the ups and downs and the life of what a DJ has to go through. And I even saw when you kind of spoke about that sometimes the DJ is forgotten that, you know, it's really me that's making the noise, that, you know, that's really bringing the vibe into to everybody. So we really hope that Sundance kicks that off. Yeah, I really do too. It, I mean, the, you know, the DJ is overlooked a lot. Um, and again, you do have very popular DJs. DJs doing great things. DJ Khaled, DJ Drama right now. Um, my head is off to those guys, um, but there's so many more DJs that um, you know do a lot of work, support a lot of artists, make a lot of people's lives enjoyable, help make a lot of people money, and these DJs are not necessarily recognized. And, uh, so it's a story for DJs, but it's also a story for people who want to chase their dreams, and it's a story of you know enduring 
the ups and downs because success is something that you have to survive as well. People think that poverty is something, or you got to survive poverty. No, you also have to survive success. Money, more money than you've ever had. You have to be able to survive fame. You have to be able to survive fake friends now that you have. You have to be able to survive um, holding on to all of these material things you gain when money ain't good no more. You know what I mean? And not get lost in drugs and all that. So success is to be, you know, is to be feared and looked upon, you know, with, you know, with caution. It's not everything. Right? Yeah, it's not everything. Yeah, yeah. That's some good advice, though. Yeah. Success destroys people. Look at it. It happens every day. It's on unsung. It's on. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. But, I mean, we know some of the downs that can happen, but yeah. what are some of the most memorable moments that you've had as far as being a DJ and being a mentor? Oh, let me tell you, I, um, even right now, this year, I would say I've been to Russia, um, in Paris, I mean, my first time to Australia, I spent two weeks in Australia, one week doing some dates. You went on my birthday. You went on your birthday? You went on my birthday. Oh, I did? Yes, I saw that. You must have had a wonderful Yes, I did. I mean, that's not your birthday. That's yeah, just, just that train. But you are right. <laughs> yeah, I was there with Lil John for a week, and then I okay. stayed another week through some clubs. So I guess I was, all I was really going to say was that the traveling, the, the access to the world because of the gift of music, which unites the world, um, has been a blessing that I never thought. Um, I never thought about that in my younger days, like being able to really travel and like on a regular basis and, and see the world from spinning music. You know what I mean? Because initially you're thinking money, TV, fame, girls. Is, Maybe, it, is it in that order? I don't know if it's in that order, but you okay. know you're not so thinking of a lifetime of, of happiness, of really doing what you're doing. Because even with the ups and downs, believe me, I, I do recognize the blessing of just following the gift that I was given and just seeing it through. So you said you was in Australia with Blue John. Is that the tour that you're working on right now? Kevin? Yeah. yeah. Um, Little John is a, uh, a person who I've known in, in his early DJ years as well as when he was uh, in office so social death. So Jay, so so Lil John's a smart dude, and I don't know if people really, really get that. He seems very, very He's very smart. smart. John has so many hit records overseas right now, dance records, that is really keeping him working. You know what I mean? And I think you know, looking at him and thinking, you know, he's just about front, he's not a smart guy, you know what he's doing. So he works a lot. So he asked me to ask me to hit the road with him. Well, is there any like advice that you have for like up and coming DJs, people who are trying to, you know, embark into that world? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I speak, you know, definitely in broad terms. I mean, you know, with DJs, mm, um, this business, I, I would just say this really for, for anything, anybody trying to pursue anything, you know, you really have to focus on your strengths, you know what I'm saying, and be aware of your weaknesses. A lot of people are like, I'm really good at this, and they don't pay attention to the fact that maybe they're not good at keeping up with their money, you know what I'm saying, or, uh, you know, following up with their business themselves. Or maybe I'm a great business person, I'm not really that great of an artist. But there are a lot of people that consider themselves artists that, you know, you have to do art to, do, to be artists, you know what I'm saying? So it's not just trying to be a star. I see people put more... <laughs> more emphasis into their looks than their work. So if you know what your your, your strengths are and you focus on those and you're aware of what your weaknesses are, you won't you, you save time trying to maneuver in this business. You know what I'm saying? Be real with yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Gotta be honest. That's with been, that's tough. And I, I think people need, need to know how specifically to be real. <laughs> are you really that talent? Are you really? Do you really understand why Jay Z is Jay Z? You know, do you really know that? Don't, don't run with me. I sold, you know, dope on the street and then I hustled. And, you know what I'm Jay Z got a serious talent. Like there's a reason why he is who he is. And uh, you know, Michael Jackson. I'm here to celebrate Michael Jackson. He's not regular. You know, he's, he's phenomenal. phenomenal. Like he's, he's been phenomenal. And, uh, you know, somebody saw that in him early on. So I think for yourself, you have to be, try to be objective or have ob objective people around you. Focus on your strengths and all your weaknesses.